the Make Real Money Podcasting, the weekly series brought to you by the Podcast Business Journal. Here are your hosts, Radio Inc. and Podcast Business Journal editor, Ed Ryan, and produce your podcast CEO, Tracy DeForge. And hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Make Real Money Podcasting, now a weekly series. You know, for the past two years, Radio Inc. and the Podcast Business Journal have been hosting a two-day virtual conference with the same name, and it's gone over so well, we decided to turn it into a weekly series. Every Thursday, we'll be interviewing either a company who helps podcasters make money or podcasters that are making money themselves. And so you don't just have to look at my ugly mug every week. We broke into the piggy bank to bring in some real talent. Every week, uh, Tracy DeForge, the CEO of Produce Your Podcast, is going to be uh, with us. And Tracy, thanks so much for being part of the show. Hey, I'm so excited and so happy to be here. Great, great. And uh, we're going to jump right into it. We do have a special guest coming up at uh, the bottom of the hour, somebody that we haven't been promoting, somebody that we think you're going to learn a lot from. But first, our first guest of the weekly series is the CEO of Supercast. Jason, welcome aboard. Jason, how are things going? Going great. Great to be here with you. So Jason, uh, the first question that I have for you is, uh, tell us about the Supercast platform. Exactly what is Supercast? Yeah, so Supercast is the preferred uh, podcast subscription and, and membership platform uh, for some of the most well-monetized podcasts in the world. Um, so we focus exclusively on helping podcasters that you know have done the hard work of building up a loyal uh, engaged audience on on you know their their public podcast uh, and we help them really employ you know the the thousand true fans model that was popularized by by Kevin Kelly this idea that uh, there is uh, you know, a, a percentage of your audience, you know, your diehard fans, uh, whether that be 5% of your audience, 10% of your audience that really love your work and, and quite frankly would pay to get access to more of your content. So they already, in, in a lot of cases, consume everything that you you produce. And, uh, you know, with, with a lot of the creators we serve, we, we see that uh, their members would happily pay $5, $10, even $15 a month to you as the creator to get access to to bonus episodes or maybe an ad free feed uh or maybe um the ability to ask you questions you know and, and kind of like get a, a bonus ama and ask me anything episode from you on uh, a weekly uh monthly basis uh, whatever it is that you know kind of is right for you and your audience supercast is the platform that basically makes it really really easy to both accept money from from your listeners uh to to promote the fact you have a free feed and then to be able to deliver those premium perks just to the people you know that are that are paying for them so uh so jason uh after somebody gets a podcast set up they're going through the the you know the beginning stages of getting uh, everything uploaded and starting to push it out on social. And, uh, you know, now they feel like they're in a, a, in a, a like a groove here or they get the show out. How hard is it for them uh, to set up some kind of uh, system on Supercast? How easy do you make it? How hard is it? Uh, and, and, you know, what, do you have help for the podcasters to take them through the steps or is it just basically get online? I mean, kind of tell us, uh, how how podcasters can, uh, can use your uh, platform to help them make the money? Great question. So um, usually, when podcasters come to us, it's it's the situation you've described. You know, they've built up their audience. They've kind of you know got their their podcasting stack. Let's call it you know like down pat. You know, whether it's using um, you know like a host like Buzzsprout or Libsyn or so on. Um, you know, maybe they're collecting email addresses, uh, but, you know, whatever it is that they're doing, um, they have that system down pat. And we we honestly don't want to mess with that. Um, we Supercast really is a layer on top that helps you with the monetization. So we don't require you to move your podcast to Supercast. You can continue doing that the, the, the way you uh, currently have your workflow set up. In terms of like how easy it is to get going on Supercast, uh, really, we've we've created our platform to make it as easy as possible, so that you know you can create an account uh, and and really you you pick your show. Uh, so we have a you know when you we've first come to supercast.com, you land on the homepage, you click um, sign up now, 
we have a podcast picker where basically, you know, if you're if you've got a public podcast, you'll be able to find your own podcast, and we will load in a lot of the data that you already, you know, uh, provide uh, when you go and set up your your podcast metadata. Um, so a lot of that kind of like heavy lifting and in the initial steps are, are done for you, um, and then from that point onwards, it's it's really working through what is it that you want to offer uh, as premium perks to paying subscribers. Um, and so that's where you can define the concept of plans or tiers within Supercast. You can list out, um, uh, you know, like what you want to offer in terms of the ad free content, maybe, you know, it doesn't have to be ad free. Uh, Supercast and, and premium subscription works, you know, just, just in conjunction with ads, you know, really, really well, actually. Um, you can, you can uh, let people know what kind of bonus content you're offering. Uh, whether you want to provide access to, let's say, you know, AMAs or a community like a private Facebook group. Um, again, you know, those things are really kind of like easy to list out. And then you you choose your price points. You can sell monthly annual plans um, and then, you know, essentially publish that page live on Supercast and then start talking about it uh, on your show and, and, and you know, linking uh, to the sign-up page uh, in your show notes. So the, the platform itself makes it as easy as possible. We integrate with all of the podcast players. You know, a key part of our technology is the listeners can be can be signing up from, from any podcast player. So it doesn't matter whether they use Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, Overcast. We make that all seamless. So it's really just two taps for a listener to come and add your private feed to their podcast player of choice. So that just to, just to repeat that, because it's, it's kind of really, really a key point of how we set up Supercast is we don't want people to change podcast player. You know, they, they've already made that decision. They already have their listening library all set up the way that they want. And so we make it as easy as possible to get the premium version of the pod, of your podcast into that same player so there is no we get asked right. all the time is there a supercast app no there is no supercast app we don't want a supercast app because we're all about helping you meet the listener where they they already are and again it's it's just uh two taps with that so between that and using apple pay and google pay to sign up you know so they just scan their face and you know kind of don't have to enter credit card details it takes you know 10 to 20 seconds for a listener to, to sign up. Now, uh, for, is, for is, that a, is that your office right there? That's pretty cool looking office if that's your, <laughs> is that your office or is that your, is that your bedroom there? <laughs> uh, it, it's a hybrid workspace and bedroom. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Tracy. Yes, well, you know, I want to say that the listener experience is incredibly important. I think when any podcaster is thinking about how to monetize their podcast, a lot of times the first thought is what's in it for them. But what I love about Supercast and what you're saying is, is that you're really reinforcing what's in it for the listener. And the easier and more seamless the experience can be for the listener, the more listeners are going to want to participate and be a part of that. So I think kudos for you on the strategy side of making that so easy. You mentioned earlier the tiers that people, uh, that podcasters can set up. Can you tell us one or two examples of some really successful tiers that are working? I know you said bonus content, you said ad-free feeds, but maybe give us a couple of examples of some of the podcasters that are on Supercast, that their tiers that are working well for them. Yeah, so uh, there is a, a customer on Supercast called Breaking Points. Um, so they are uh, uh, a, a combination YouTube and uh, audio podcast. Um, so they publish to, to both platforms uh, three times a week. Uh, and they're a, um, a news and uh, kind of political podcast. Uh, and the point of difference is um, Crystal's from a political point of view, Crystal's on the left and Saga is on the right. And so unlike, you know, kind of like a lot of mainstream media these days where it's kind of, you get, you know, kind of one viewpoint. Right, not polarizing. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they, their point of difference is they, they, they like to bring the debate, you know, they, they like to discuss a topic, you know, rising gas prices. And then, you know, the other host will give, you know, their, their point of view. Um, so what they offer is on their, their, their basic tier, um, they offer a range of benefits such as early access to the episode. So it's just one hour in their show, but because it's kind of a day, daily show three times a week, premium subscribers love getting it, you know, like a little bit earlier than everybody else. Um, they also get uh, the reaction to each other's monologues. So each show, 
um, say Saga does a, a monologue, he will then turn to Crystal after his five minute monologue on rising gas prices and say, so what do you think, Crystal? And that that's where, it, you know, kind of like you have to be a premium subscriber to get, you know, like that that little uh, that response. Uh, they also offer the the ability for members to ask questions. Um, so once a week, they'll they'll release a special AMA episode where they they're actually responding to members' questions that they've asked through Supercast. We have a we have an AMA page where members can ask and upvote each other's questions, uh, and then you know once a week, basically. Uh, crystal and saga you know answer the top five or six questions you know and just kind of like work their way through uh the, the list um and uh and, and all of this is ad free so in their their case you know that is a basic tier uh that and that's offered at ten dollars a month um you can also uh, sign up for the annual option uh and pay a uh, hundred dollars so you get you know a couple of months for free um in in their case you know that's uh for, for subscribers uh that just you know kind of want to um pay once a year and get some savings and then they also have a lifetime membership option this is you know like this is this is uh, uh not so common because it is a f uh, it's a fifteen hundred dollar one-time uh, purchase option. Oh, and wow. So, well, if you don't so, ask, you don't get, right, Ed? If you don't ask, <laughs> right. you don't get. You know, in the beginning, when they launched a year ago, they thought they might get, you know, 50, 100 of these, you know, but it was for the real diehards who wanted to be recognized at the end of the show and, you know, really, right. you know, just get it out of the way and 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 really get behind them as hosts who are going independent from, you know, from a, from a mainstream news channel. I, you know, I, I can tell you these numbers because they, of course, list the names, you know, at the end of every episode. There's like 700 of them. At the oh, time. wow. So, so you do the numbers. It's like 700 yeah. times 1,500. You know, like that's yeah. over seven figures just in that one tier alone. So, again, yeah. I'm not going to pretend that everyone, you know, can do this or it's right for everybody. But but I will say I, I'm blown away by the the appetite of people to get behind hosts that they love. I, right. I think we're in a different time now where if you have a deep connection with a show and, and, you know, it, it really adds value to your life. Like, you know, you, you will, you will open up um, and, and, you know, lend your support. But I think you bring up a good point that I want to focus on, which is they weren't really necessarily buying it because it was the lifetime membership. It doesn't feel like that was necessarily the draw. It feels like the draw was the listeners really want the affiliation with the show and they want that recognition of that, in card at the end of the show or having their names being recognition. So it wasn't necessarily, I'm going to pay this one time flat fee and be done with it as much as it was. I really want to support the show. I want to be a part of the show. And by there's, by doing this, I get to have recognition alongside the show. And I think that's another, again, that's really important to the listeners. Absolutely. So mission, which you're touching on there and, and, you know, like, and, and wanting the show to succeed and, and, and feeling like you're getting behind something that is important. That is a, that is a uh, super important aspect that we're always coaching uh, our, uh, our, our creators and our podcasters on, um, you know, Ed, before you're asking about, you know, kind of, is it just a platform or is it also a service? Really important question. We, we pride ourselves on being both of those things because mm -hmm. we of course see a lot of subscription programs. You know, we, we, have the privilege of seeing what works and what doesn't uh, and so we actually take a lot of time to to coach uh you know creators that are coming through on what they can offer you know what resonates what might go, be a good fit for their vertical you know health is different from politics is different from uh sports uh and then um you know like what how they should price things and whether they should structure them as tiers and then also their launch and their marketing campaign equally as important you know like um how do you how do you announce this onto your public feed? How do you let people right. know about it in a way that, you know, kind of touches on the mission, but then also lets people know what they're going to get? Uh, how do you continue to reiterate that, you know, over time, make it as easy as possible for, for people to sign up? Um, and then and then also tease, importantly, like tease the fact that you've got, you know, like yep. that premium content that people are missing out on. You know, it's, so, it's uh, yeah, it, it, they're all kind of like really, really important pieces of the puzzle. So, Jason, at what point along the way for a podcaster should they consider getting on a platform like yours? I mean, you, obviously, you don't want to come right out of the gate and start asking people for money when they don't even know if your content's any good. How many, you know, uh, downloads or or Facebook uh, views or YouTube uh, subscribers do you think you should have 
and, and at what point do you think they should start to incorporate, okay, maybe I should, you know, uh, uh, take it to the next level and start uh, putting it behind a paywall or asking people to, to contribute? Yeah, good, good question. So we serve really the whole range. Um, you know, on, on our website, you'll see a stat there that says, you know, the top 10 podcasters on Supercast gross $13 million a year through subscription alone. Thirteen. I'm sorry, million. did you just say thirty million dollars a year? One, one, three, thirteen. Not quite that much, <laughs> but still a lot. Still a that lot. That is still a lot. <laughs> so, so again, our top ten make thirteen million dollars through subscription alone. So, when you add ad revenue, I, I don't know what their ad revenue is, but it will be significant. You know, so, so that's when I say, you know, like that's what, why I say we work with some of the most well monetized podcasts in the world because a lot of them have both of those revenue streams uh you know ads flowing in and then subscription you know um uh being you know in a lot of cases even more robust and stable than you know than advertising advertising dollars uh but you know we also have podcasters um that you know uh, uh earlier in their journey um and really it's it's to me there's there's two parts to the question of like how early should you turn on subscription um, and so the first part is um you know what i like to call uh podcast market fit you know and th this idea that you know it just feels like you've got a show that is organically growing um and so you know like if if you're too early and you're not quite sure whether you know like your show is resonating then i would say you know like your your time and energy is is best uh, uh, suited to to continuing to explore podcast market fit and making sure that you've got um, you know a, a show that is organically growing. You know any kind of monetization, whether it's ads or subscription. You know it's too early to think about if let's say you're putting out episodes, you're pumping out episodes, and you're only getting a hundred downloads. You know on each episode, and it's not going up, and you know like you're you're just you know continuing to to uh produce content you know i would say you're better off again you know looking at how can you distribute that content better how can you get found better how can you change up you know the format or or narrow down the niche you know like to try and and once once it starts to rise and it's almost like wow you know you just have to keep creating content and and the numbers keep growing up i would say that's you know that's the point where so what is um, it 500 a thousand or 250 what do you think the right number is as long as it's it's, it's going up yeah. So, so the second point is, you know, what is meaningful? What is a meaningful amount of money to you? So, so let's take, for example, ten thousand downloads. You know, that's kind of like the common benchmark. Sure. You know, like so. Let's take ten thousand. So, the the math, the way the math works is, our top twenty. We've analyzed our top twenty podcasts. They convert uh, right at around an average of five percent of their average okay. downloads per episode into paying subscribers. So, ten thousand. Um, you know, like five percent of that is five hundred uh, subscribers. Uh, you know, like paying you, um, you know, like let's say uh, five dollars a month. So that works out to be twenty five hundred dollars per month that you'd be getting from your premium subscription, or thirty thousand dollars a year. And so the question is, like, what does thirty thousand dollars a year mean to you as a creator? Is that a lot of money, or you know, like? you know, not worth getting out of bed for, you know, I think, I think, you know, a lot of people who are at that level would be like, Oh, that's not bad. You know, like $30,000, you know, definitely pays, you know, kind of my hosting, you know, and maybe, you know, yeah. a large part of my production costs. So not um, quit your day job money, but it's, it's getting closer <laughs> to quit your day job money. Exactly. Exactly. And it gives you a you to base to build on. Towards keep, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It gives you a base to build on. You can make your content better, build your audience. And as you build your audience, your subscription is going to grow with that as well. Right. Tracy? Well, one of the things that I also wanted to point out in terms of as the podcast starts with those smaller numbers and you, you may only have that 100 to 500 and you're accelerating, but utilizing a program like yours also gives the podcaster opportunity to continue the conversation with their audience after the show. And I think that that's something that you don't, you, you're really talking at your audience when you're actually creating your content. So it's hard to be able to engage with. So it feels like even if you're starting with a smaller number and building your audience, that gives you the opportunity to be able to 
maybe engage with them more, see what they, what they're wanting, see getting feedback from them. So then at that point, if you're able to get that level of feedback, then you can accelerate the growth of your show, which would then ultimately accelerate the growth of your memberships. And it really feels like it would be this whole cyclical support, but you'd able, you're able to have those conversations and that engagement with those people um, outside of the show itself. Yeah, it's it's a really great point. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about you know obviously making money. That's the, the, the you know the premise of the series, but uh, from the listener side, um, what we're really interested in is is fostering that connection, taking that connection even further between you as the host um, and uh, them as a listener. You know, like what what do people pay for? It's um, you know uh, uh, you know th- supporting the mission of the show. It's access to more content and it's access to you. You know, mm-hmm. that is a really important, you know, part. And in some cases, maybe even access to each other, you know, and if you're developing a community around the show. Um, and so um, when you, when people create as, uh, when, when listeners sign up to Supercast, uh, you get access to all of the emails uh, of all of the members um, because they, they are now, you know, not just kind of anonymous listeners, but, you know, members of uh, your premium community. And through Supercast, you can obviously publish um, premium episodes to those people, you know, just the same way that you would upload to your your public podcasting host. But we also offer the functionality for you to create uh, email posts out to um, your audience mm-hmm. as well. And in that way, you know, you can, you can, you know, just kind of send out notes, you can sh- send out transcripts, you can send out surveys, polls, uh, whatever it is that you want. You know, if you want to do a, a crowd cast, you know, like you can integrate in and kind of like forge the kind of community and the kind of subscription program um, that, that you want. And we, we really believe in, you know, putting, putting that uh, flexibility into the hands of our creators. So, Jason, what is your advice on uh, how how people should approach asking for money? Like we were talking about before, if you don't ask, you're you're there's a hundred percent guarantee that if you don't ask, no. you're you're not going to get any money. The right. answer will always well, be no if you do not ask the question. But but uh, one of the things with my wife on our show on the weekend is that she gets a little, you know, she feels like she's asking the. Um, uh, the people that follow the show, like it's, 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 it's too much. She's like, you're, we're happy. They're just watching the show. I don't want to ask them for money. And, but you know, when you start asking them for money, they're happy to contribute. So there's that line between, you know, uh, making sure you ask, make sure you don't sound like you're begging, but also, um, you know, doing it in the right way so that, you know, they feel like they want to be part of your community. What's the right way to do it? Great question. So we actually have um, uh, a, a blog post. Uh, so if anyone wants to kind of listen to a few of the examples, you can uh, go to supercast.com slash blog or just Google, uh, I think it's called the the top 10, uh, top tip 10 pitches that we have heard uh, and, mm-hmm. and maybe with the Supercast name. And so what we've done there is we've actually gone out amongst, you know, our shows and clipped out, you know, like, the top 10 pitches from, from different creators where they, they really go through this process. They go through this process of how do I articulate what I do? How do I articulate what's unique to me, what listeners love about my show, and then also let them in on the situation that I'm in, um, you know, and, and the fact that uh, this, you know, it takes a lot of work. It takes, a, you know, a lot of effort to produce all of these episodes and, and, and you know, a lot of, you know, my time as well. Um, so there's there's a whole lot of you know components that can go into it. You don't have to jam everything into one read. You know is is a really important point. You know, like we're we're often coaching our, our people to say, okay, like yes, you know, like the launch of it is important, and and you know you have to have you know some key points over like why you're introducing premium, um, you know what what you know kind of the money will be used towards, um, you know what listeners get and how they can sign up, um, but you know, kind of the, after, after that, you know, maybe you can take, you know, slightly different tax on, um, you know, like what, what some of the money is going to go towards, you know, what specific equipment, you know, like that it'll, it'll enable you to buy, um, yeah. or, um, uh, you know, just d- different, different angles that, you know, like you, you might take to, to let people in on, um, 
uh, you know, how the money will, will further the show and in turn, you know, like allow it to reach more people. Or, or That's a great uh, idea. Well, how, pe- how can people find that, uh, that information again so they can go to your site and look for those pitches? Because that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, I just actually pulled the link up, Ed, and it's supercast.com forward slash blog. And then when you go to that, um, the link, supercast.com forward slash blog, you're going to see the first post is the top 10 subscription pitches we've nice. heard. So, yeah, really great feedback. And, you know, one of the things that I always like to share with our podcasters is that with the background in, in radio like Ed and I have, no one ever was excited to support the station through ads. No one said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to support your ad, you know, your station, your show yeah. through ads. But podcaster listeners really understand that they're consuming content that the podcasters are creating and that there's a cost associated with that. And they want the podcasters to be successful. They want the podcasters to continue to create that content. So so there's almost like this willingness that I've never seen before in the industry to support podcasters in order to be able to align with them and continue to hear the content that they're creating. And I think it's a beautiful reciprocity, actually. It is. I mean, the, the beautiful thing about podcasting is the listener already knows that they want to spend time with you because they do it. They've been doing it, you know, like for months and months, you know, on end. So, so they, you know, in a way, you know, like if you've, if you've changed people's lives, if you've added value to their lives, you know, they already know that, you know, that they're somewhat in debt to you. We see it all the time amongst uh, podcasts that, that, you know, we would dearly love them to turn on subscription. We, we see in some of the feedback in the comments, their iTunes reviews, you know, on Twitter, people say, man, I, you know, I feel like I should be paying you $10 a month. Like, you know, wh- where can I do that? You know, I can't believe this, yeah. this podcast is free. And, um, and, 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 you know, again, uh, you know, I, I would encourage people to, to, to go and listen to some of those pitches. Uh, I, I just, I just came back from podcast movement in Dallas last week. Uh, Ed, Ed, you're at the talk, you know, with Jesse Brown from Canada land. So I got one of our customers, Canada land on stage and I played some of his pitches on stage through the microphone, uh, you know, um, and it, on episode 51, you know, this is when he first did it, you know, six, some six or seven years ago, uh, he, he just opened up to his listener and he said, look, he said, I've, I, I, I love this podcast. I love this, this content that I'm creating. I'm, I'm having the time of my life, you know, producing this show, but it's just not working. And, and he said, you know, I, financially it is not, I, this is coming out of my pocket uh, and I, I can't believe that there is a problem here because I have 10,000 people. I, there's 10,000 of you in the audience tuning into the show, but from a financial standpoint, it just doesn't work. And so he said to his listeners, so, you know, like, here's what we're going to do. You know, like I, I would love to to keep this going. If I can get a thousand of you to pay $5, you know, a month, then the show goes on. If I can get 4,000 of you uh, to pay, then I will quit my job and go full time with this. And if I can get 10,000 of you to support me, you know, long term, he was like, that's the moonshot over the next one or two years. If I can get 10,000, then I will start a podcast network. Now, Jason, I don't mean to interrupt, but who exactly are you talking about? Jesse Brown from Canada Land. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I could not have teed that up any better. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I had no idea that Jesse was about to show up. Jesse from Canada Land is right there. What are you guys we talking, talking about? Talking about behind your back, Jesse. Talking about you and your success in monetizing your subscriptions. Jason was talking about episode fifty-one when you uh, first discovered that you loved your job but that you were going broke i'm paraphrasing there and it was time for you to ask your listeners to help you out when you made that pitch there how did it go better than i i I really could have expected within the day we we hit our first target uh within uh the week we hit our second which was uh canada land becoming my full-time job and then before the year was out uh, we, we hit that moonshot goal that I really, I really wow. was not prepared to reach. And, you know, our trajectory really has kind of gone along with the, the technical ability for a business like this to exist. I mean, I, it took me a year to make the ask because I didn't know that I had the option of asking people for monthly support. When I started, all I knew about was Kickstarter and Indiegogo. It was a listener 
who told me, oh, there's this thing called Patreon. And then we built our business on Patreon. And then at a certain point, we were hitting friction and bumps with uh, churn. People were subscribing for a while, but leaving. And we realized that uh, a lot of the functionality that we required as podcasters to offer, you know, uh, premium feeds and uh, a lot of the, the analytics that we needed, a lot of the support that we needed, you know, it wasn't there. And then we learned about Supercast and that was the next major spike where we, we, we maintained our supporters, like our churn rate just evaporated. We, we, we no longer shed people uh, in between crowdfunding campaigns. We, we kept them and now we just sort of grow, grow, grow. So, Jason, before we let you go, we do have a question from Dave, uh, and I'm going to pop it up there. He wants to know if he has to post the bonus content to Supercast or to his hosting platform. I want to make sure we take care of all the, the folks watching that are watching live. Uh, what's what's the answer to that one, Jason? Great question. Um, so uh, you can you can do either. Um, so you can you can definitely post it directly to supercast uh and you know we we function you know basically as a a host in that way um but if it's easier for you to post it uh to your hosting platform on on another feed or let's say you want to you know kind of like uh take the uh the public episodes and also put them on the pri pri private feed as well as kind of like bonus episodes that are directly uploaded to supercast then we have a syncing technology that can basically bring it okay. across, you know, from, from Great. your uh, public podcast host. Well, Jason, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you being the first guest on the series. And uh, uh, I apologize for surprising you with our special <laughs> guests there, but oh, uh, that was, was a great surprise. It was a great surprise. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know I was teeing you up, Jesse, but he, he, have, please have the stage. It, it's like, thanks a lot, Jason. <laughs> Take care, Jason. We appreciate the Thanks, CEO Jason. of Supercast. Now, uh, Jesse, for our audience that might not know uh, what Canada Land is, can you can you give us the uh, you know the the short version of uh, of who you are and and what Canada Land is? Sure. I come from um, a public uh, radio broadcasting background. I worked at the CBC as a host and producer, and uh, yeah, like nine years ago now, I had an idea for a show, and uh, though. I've I've been a professional broadcaster and journalist. I couldn't get anybody to, to, to pick me up, uh, take me up on the idea. It was to do media criticism in, in Canada. So I launched it as just my podcast, the way that somebody might start a blog or I guess these days start a TikTok or something. It was just sort of supposed to be my podcast that I did for free, uh, where I talked to different journalists each week. But uh, I had sort of the burden of success with it. it. It became something that a lot of people listened to. And in addition to just talking with people about the media, people started bringing me stories and scoops. And it just started to take off and become this thing that took up more and more of my time. And, you know, you go where the action is. And it was interesting. It was so exciting to have an audience and have this total little freedom and have stories, news to break. But, we, you know, I, I couldn't do it for free. And and I think as Jason was sharing, we reached this, this point where it's like, this doesn't make sense. How could this be the most successful thing I, I've done and yet be this thing that's just costing me money? And that's when we found the business model for it through listener support. And I think that's the kind of thing that was like, you know, because we're in Canada and our, our market is a tenth the size, potential listenership is a tenth the size uh, as, as America. Uh, we had to find a different business model, you know, to scale to the point where you could build it on advertising. It's just with a show called Canada Land, it wasn't going to happen. So we really kind of pioneered this listener support model. Now, we do have an advertising business. And since we've grown from just my podcast to a company of 15 full timers and a whole bunch of freelancers, we are wow. a network. We got a politics show. We have a documentary series. We do limited series that are that have been listened to millions of times outside of Canada, true crime investigations like Thunder Bay, Cool Mules, White Saviors. So we're kind of a, uh, a growing production house, but we're focused on news and news analysis, political coverage, things like that, uh, serving Canadian listeners. And we've got over 10,000 paying subscribers now. So uh, I know, Tracy, go ahead. Uh, well, you know, you bring up an interesting point outside of just the monetization around the show itself and the subscribers. I mean, you've built a network and that involves, um, you know, it, this is moving up into the entrepreneurial business owner model at this point. So what were some of your challenges in scaling from being a single show operator, if you will, of managing your own podcast in that type of accelerated growth to building out a team of 15 full timers and freelancers i mean what what were some of the challenges you faced doing that and a tip for somebody who might be thinking to go to that next level 
You know, it's a great question. And I think I, I made some stumbles along the way and, and some miscalculations thinking that, you know, when I started my podcast, Candle, and when, when that's what it was, um, making sure that it came out consistently every week and was as good as it could possibly be, that's a point of pride for me and something that I knew it wasn't going to succeed coming from broadcasting. And I know that podcast listener behavior is ritualized. It's got to be there, you know, and yep. one week I've got a great show and the next week, well, this is the best I could do, but it's going to come out. Now you add other people to that and, and it's okay. We've got some hosts who are doing a, a new show about politics. We've got some other people doing a new show about arts and culture and there you cannot expect other people to have that same commitment to a show that is in your network that you kind of own. Um, and, you know, we, we've paid people from the start. We never expected anyone to donate their time, but uh, this was the, it took some learning to realize we're going to have to grow up and give people real jobs if we expect uh, them to, you know, be like professional broadcasters and to deliver to our standards. Right. Uh, we, we always had wonderful people delivering wonderful stuff, but, uh, but, you know, there's that level of passion you have for your thing that you're going to have solely. And if you want to turn that into a business that other people uh, deliver on and feel strongly about, then you've, you've kind of got to professionalize and, and offer what an employer offers. And I see this with other podcasts trying to go the network model and grow into networks. And then things kind of fall apart because you've got, you know, a satellite kind of organization where there's three or four different shows and somebody stops delivering on time. And, you know, like if it's sort of yep. a co-op model, it's really hard to build cons consistency um, and, and, and to have kind of like um, equity and everybody pulling their own weight to contribute to the network. Jesse, when did you dec decide that uh, um, you were going to start asking and for money? Because th there's always, we were talking earlier, uh, there's always that line where you got these people listening and then, oh, crap, I got to ask them for money. Or and they might be thinking, you're thinking, they might be thinking, oh, my gosh, he's asking me for money. Like, where's that? There's, where's, there's always that line where it seems like, you know, I can ask because they're there. Um, and they might be okay with it, but they also might think I'm begging for money or something. So what is, I mean, how do you, how did you approach that? Take people through that so that they're comfortable doing it. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's something that kept me up at night, literally. Like, you know, I, I had, uh, my biggest regret is that I didn't do it sooner. Cause you know, I had my own ego involved. Like I'm a professional. I've done this on national radio in Canada. I'm not going to like put out my hat and, and beg people for, for spare change. Like a podcast is free. And, you know, I, I really had like a psychological barrier uh, involved in saying like, hey, maybe you could give a dollar a month so that I can actually pay my, my hosting fees. It felt pathetic to me. And, and, and beyond that feeling, I also worried about failing. I worried about being one of those uh, crowdfunding campaigns where you say, we need a thousand dollars a month and you end up with $10 and you know that it's like my uncle who did it out of <laughs> pity, you know? <laughs> This was nine years ago, and the idea of paying people for digital content, paying your, your favorite creator, was not as common as it is now. So true. Right. You know, I, I, so, you know, I cut myself a bit of slack in that I was I was doing something that was pretty uncommon at the time. But I feel like like now everybody gets it. Everybody understands and people feel good about it. And, and I'm, I went from feeling that embarrassed about it to being the most shameless crowdfunder you'll ever hear. <laughs> Um, because what I, what I've learned from our, our audience is they understand the deal completely. They're not going to get the kind of content they want, independent media, you know, uh, investigative journalism, accountability journalism, but this, I think applies to any podcast, whatever the subject is, if a podcast is, is successful, it's because it's talking about something that probably wasn't being talked about or not being talked about fully. And if it found an audience, it's because it's filling a need. So people understand that they, they 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 get that this is something that I, you know i'm participating in this and they want to extend that relationship and we we went from really prioritizing like we'll send you a t-shirt we'll send you a tote bag to leading with the mission uh that's what people feel good about you pay us to do this not because you get exclusive bonus content that's a nice perk you pay us to do this so that a hundred other people who are never going to pay they get it for free because of your your, I don't even want to say yeah, generosity right because I, I yeah. stop. We, we don't even like uh, position ourselves. It's not a charity. We're not a registered charity. We're providing a service and yeah. you, you know, you want this. So we're going to, and we're going to make it even better. And, and, and every year when we ask for money, we say, here's how we're going to make it better. If you get us up to this level, we'll launch this new show. 
Uh, we're always having conversations. And, and it's interesting, too, because it's not it's not always uh, that we get funded for the things that we want to do. Sometimes we, we, we will say we want to do this. And then the audience says, yeah, we want you to do that. And then we do it or try our best. Sometimes we'll say, here's what we want to do if we get to this level. And we get a weaker response. And that gives us the opportunity to say, you know what? That's Didn't not work. something that, yeah, they, they don't value that. They value something. There's something else that we could have been offering that they would have wanted more. So it actually creates this really good relationship where we feel like we work for our listeners and we give them what, what they paid us for. And how are you recognizing the listeners? You read their names. Uh, I think I heard you say you're reading some names, but you also have some audio of, uh, of the listeners that you play on the show. Is that right? That's right. At, at, you know, at the $5 a month level, we'll thank you on the show. And, uh, you know, at the $9 a month level, uh, we'll hear from you. Why do you support us? And then we'll hear, you know, each each supporter say a few words about why they support us. It's a little bit like watching your favorite kids show back in the 80s. And then they would like have the birthdays <laughs> listed, you know. But you know what? Like people love it. People love people, it. People love it. They, you know, they 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 some people tell me, you know what? I I I've gotten really busy lately, but I can't stop listening to your podcast because you haven't said my name yet. I know it's coming. <laughs> well, it's That's working great. really well for Peloton, so it's probably working really well for you. And they started doing those shout outs. People would be like, I'll just keep riding until someone says my name. So they'll just keep <laughs> listening until someone says your says their name. Yeah, that's a good analogy I hadn't thought of before, but it's I, I think that's pretty accurate. It's it's a strong incentive. So what is what what is the platform uh, that you're getting the most success at uh, pushing out your content? Is it just Supercast? Is it Facebook? Is it, I mean, all of the above? How, how are you getting the show out so that you can keep growing and bring more people in? Well, you know what? We're on like uh, so like a growing list of platforms. My producers get annoyed with me because it's like, now we've got to promote it to Facebook and post it to Supercast and post it to right. Apple. And you know, it's like the list just gets longer and longer. But there's a very clear answer to your question. What's, what is the biggest channel? It is the open RSS you know, infrastructure of podcasting. And that is the backbone of podcasting. The fact that it's an open ecosystem, anybody can publish an RSS, anybody can scrape an RSS, listen to an RSS on any player of their choice. That interoperability and that openness is essential to our ecosystem. And I'm really resistant to, I think, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of push to kind of get us behind various walled gardens on various platforms. Uh, I, I feel as strongly about podcasting as I do about the World Wide Web. You know, like there's a reason why we still have websites. It's, it's, it's that openness. Gotcha. Tracy? Well, and I think, too, that, you know, it's an important thing to talk about because we are always focused on, okay, how can we increase the bottom line? But with that comes efficiencies. And I think what you're saying is important to note is, like, you have to be able to, as you're growing, you also have to be able to support the systems to be able to do that. So staying focused on either like you're saying, keeping that open RSS feed and not having to be all things to all people, especially when you're very first starting out. And I think that's one of the questions that I would have is like, your story is so inspiring. And if you were able to just provide one tip to a podcaster who is like, I want to be just like Jesse, like what, what recommendation would you give them for either efficiency or the pitch or just um, something that could keep them moving forward to that, take that next action step? Well, I, I want to really be a passionate booster for this paid subscription model. I think everybody is shooting for the mass audience, that advertiser-based model. I want to be like Joe Rogan. I want to be like Serial. I want to be the next viral sensation. And that means that people are making podcasts with like the widest audience in mind. Not every podcast is going to be that show or should be that show. Whether it's because you're dealing with regional material, you're speaking to your town or your state or your city, or if it's a niche subject matter, uh, it seems like we we have this one really successful business model that everybody's shooting for, and it's about mass, mass, mass audience. If you can get a passionate niche audience, and I think the magic number that maybe Jason was getting into is 10,000, you get 10,000 real committed listeners and you make a pitch and one in 10 of them is going to support you. And if you've got one yeah. in 10 people giving you five, nine bucks a month, guess what? You're a pro. You're a full, that's a full-time job. You've got it. You grow from there. So, you know, I think that if you, if you get that number in mind of like, you know, the, like that, that, that opens things up, that allows you to be much more detailed and specific and really like talk to people who are in the know, as opposed to really trying to broaden and generalize for a mass audience. And I, and I think that for the ecosystem to really grow, uh, we need that in there as well. You know, and I, I just returned from podcast movement in Dallas and like, 
I think there were one or two panels on subscription-based podcasting and like, you know, everything else was how to get the biggest audience possible, how to yeah. get a big TV deal, how to get advertising and sponsorship. Uh, I want to see a lot more people playing with the, the paid subscription model. But so uh, just go ahead, Tracy. I, 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 I just want to reiterate the power of the niche because a lot of people get frustrated because they maybe don't have that massive audience, like you're saying, but it's important to think to yourself because podcasting can be so isolating in terms of sitting in a studio by yourself. But when was the last time you got a chance to stand up in front of 500 people in front of 5,000 people and get your voice out and have your message heard and be heard? Even if it's 150 people when you're very first starting out, I mean, that's a collective that you can make an impact with and make a difference at. And having that niche and then having that loyal engagement connect back to you and support you financially to your point, I love that you distilled it down. So don't go so broad you know, go vertical in your niche and really own that niche and then monetize from there because it will happen a lot more quickly for you. Yeah, that's a wonderful point because it's not just about the money. It's about the nature of the project is now this relationship with it with, you know, you could say small, but if you're talking, it doesn't really matter if you're talking to 10,000, 1,000 or 100 people, you're talking to a lot of people, you're talking to a crowd. And uh, because like when the pandemic hit, we do have an advertising business and that's our second biggest revenue stream. And when the pandemic hit, it just disappeared. But our mm -hmm. listeners, we thought, oh, they're going to cut their subscriptions because everyone's tightening their belt. We saw an increase in subscription because we were providing them pandemic coverage that they valued. So it's not just about the money. It's about like the nature of the relationship that the money is dependent upon. Like we're not we're not here because we can convince one out of a thousand of you to buy a mattress. You know, that's not why we're here. We're, we're, we're here because like 10% of the people listening to us are opening up their wallets. And when we do live events, we meet them and we see them. When, when I open up my email inbox, I'm getting story tips from them and encouragement that fuels me every right. day. They're telling me about new tools. They're all, like in the early days, they were offering like, hey, here's a logo that came from a listener. Like it, it really yeah. was like we all kind of came together to build this thing. And that that changed, you know, it just made it a happier job. Uh, than if I was constantly just trying to deliver conversions to, you know, MeUndies right. or something like that. I got nothing against advertising, but, but um, mm -hmm. you know, but this is the backbone of our business. So Je Jess, I had a question about your tiers, but I wanted to make sure I took care of Jerry's questions. He says, uh, is there a target length of a podcast, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Is one length more viewed and do you post weekly? How, how often do you post uh, your, your show? Great stuff, Jerry. Thanks. Yeah, that's a great question. When, when I was trained in, in uh, the CBC, I was told, you know, uh, one minute can be really way too long and one hour can be too short. Uh, you know, it really just depends on how interesting it is and how well, I mean, how, you know, uh, I'll say this, if you're not editing it, if you're if you're having a long conversation with friends and it's unedited, you better be a really good broadcaster. You know, like we, we edit our stuff because... It, it gets better with editing. If you edit it to the best parts, it gets better. There are people yep. who can do live, there are people who can do a three hour podcast of chat. That's fascinating. The same way that there's people who can do live radio that never gets boring. It's because they're really good at it. It's, it's not easy. Uh, what is the ideal time? I don't, we're playing with it because we feel like the question for us is what's the ideal time for the format. You know, we do one show that's news analysis. How, like people do make decisions about, okay, I'm going on a jog. Here's a 29 minute podcast. Great. I don't want right. a 45 minute podcast. They, they, they do make those decisions. Mm -hmm. And we're always looking at our analytics. If you're doing an investigative narrative show uh, and people see, wow, this is an hour and 20 minutes. I know this show. It's highly produced. It's cinematic. It, it, it's all over the world. I am so thrilled that this episode is an hour and 20 minutes because that's going to be an hour and 20 minutes where I'm taken care of. And it's going to be fascinating. You know, another show at the news analysis show, if that was an hour and 20 minutes, we would have half the downloads as usual because nobody wants that much of us chatting about the news. So I, I think it really depends on the deal that you have with your listeners. Um, I also I'm sorry if that's imprecise, but I, like, I do think that those things matter. Uh, but but it, it's always tailored to what you're doing. And that's the same thing with frequency of, of, of publishing. When I started, I felt like it has to be at least weekly. If it's, if it's bi-weekly, who can even remember? Is this an on week or is this an off week? If I'm trying to get you to have a new ritual in your life of listening to my show, I don't want you to have any guesswork. Every Monday, I'm there waiting for you, right? So that was my philosophy when we started and that worked out well. Since then, we've got shows that come out twice a week. We've got shows that come out once a month. And we've found the right frequency for, for the show. Depending on the subject matter, we have one show that's purely focused on our government here in Ontario. 
Uh, I don't, I, I think if we went to weekly, our audience would actually go smaller. They don't want that much, you know, of, of that one specific topic. But if you live in this province, getting an update once a month on what's happening, that seems to be the right fit. So again, I think the frequency has to do with your subject matter. And I have a feeling, Jesse, correct me if you think I'm wrong, like with, with podcast listeners, sometimes they'll just go about their life and they'll refresh their feed if they're uh, listening in Apple. And if they see, they might not even know that the show that they love releases on the same day, but they see that show has been released that week and they'll listen to it. Maybe they'll listen 30 minutes at home and and go do something in life and then go to the gym for another 45 minutes because they know that they can just pick it up where they left off. And it's it's a whole different way of listening and if somebody's committed to your show and they love you they're part of your tribe or a part of your community i i think uh, releasing specifically on a day or a time is less relevant um than getting up in the morning every every day at six o'clock and making sure you turn on the radio so you can hear the weather yeah i i think that's true and i, I think it, it's it's like um you know there's shows that are evergreen there's like you know like i listen to you know behind the bastards like i don't care if that episode those can accumulate on my phone for as long as you know i, I won't listen to it the day it comes out but you know if you're giving me like a three-part biography of joseph stalin uh i'll let that accumulate and i'll listen to that on my own time but if it's a daily news show you know that's a different listener experience right and, and uh, you know i i don't like you know it, it, i can i can listen to a certain daily show every day and it better be waiting for me every day and then the one day that i stop listening to it is probably the last day i'll ever listen to it you know like like it's, right. it, it, it's like an exercise regimen or something like after you get out of the habit it's done you know so different podcasters have different relationships it's and you know it, it's a big ask to be publishing on a daily basis or even a weekly basis because you know, somebody's got to stop doing yeah they don't have to stop listening to another podcast or stop doing something else to make room for right. you so I think, you know, I encourage people to think about what is the deal? What's the, what, what's the deal you're trying to make with people? So Jesse, explain your tiers. How many tiers do you have? How much does it cost for each tier? What are they getting for each tier? So people can get an idea if they wanted to start something uh, with a, with a same, a similar kind of platform or use Supercast. What, what, what kind of tiers are you using? Understanding that you're, you know, many years into this. So we're, 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 we sort of have three uh, basic tiers, and, and this is after a lot of experimentation. We used to just say, like, we just want your support no matter what. So, you know, give us a dollar a month. We, we don't ask for that anymore, because if you're willing to give us a dollar a month, you're willing to give us five. So, right. you know, the, the option is still there on, on one of our platforms, you know, if, if people just want to have more of a symbolic level of support. But we ask for the starting point is five. And five gets you our flagship show, Canada Land. It comes out twice a week. And, you know, for, for some people, it's like, that's good enough for me. I'm a supporter. I'll do that. And you get uh, you, you get uh, ad free and you get some bonus content with that. If you go up to nine dollars a month, uh, it's, it's a pretty good upsell because we've got seven shows on our network. So, you know, it's it's less than twice the money. And it's, uh, you know, that, you know, you're going from one show to seven shows. Some of those shows come out once a month. Some of them are, are limited series that came out, you know, once a year, and then we do updates and some of them come up very frequently. Um, but each show has its own value proposition, but I feel like that feels like a really good bargain for people. Uh, and that's become our most popular tier, nine bucks a month uh, for everything. And with that, we give you some merch. Um, I believe currently it's a pair of socks. Uh, and then <laughs> the socks cheap to send. You know, uh, I didn't know Val people wore socks. <laughs> Everybody needs another pair of socks. I love uh, it. I love it. Then I'm joining for the socks. I'm joining come for the socks. For the Stay socks. for the podcast, but come for the socks. <laughs> uh, and then we have the fourteen dollar tier, where really, uh, it, I think if you're moving from nine to fourteen dollars, yes, we give you more merchandise. There's, you know, you get a T-shirt, you get a this, you get a that. But really, I think it's just a reflection of like. For people for whom that's a comfortable price point who really feel passionately about us, we are giving you that option. And then we have like a whole bunch of, you know, like money means different things to different people, right? To, to some people, 50 bucks a month uh, means no different than $5 a month. And so it's not something that we put on the main page and expect a lot of people to do. But for those who really feel like, you know, like that, that that's, that's doable for them. And they feel that passionately about that. We do have those tiers and you want to make room for it. Cause you don't need many people to come to you at that tier, uh, 50, hundred dollars a month, but that is something that some people can do. And we just sort of have fun with the perks there. Like we made a limited edition 
Canada Land fragrance. We, Canada Land, the smell, you know, for men or for women, we made eight bottles of this. And it actually, we have somebody on staff who, who, who does this, who's a wonderful fragrance maker. So we actually were able to move, I think, six of these bottles, you know. Uh, we had a limited edition beer where we were sending six packs of Canada Land microbrew around. Um, we did have, and this I think is something that a lot of, you know, what, one thing that I'm learning as we go forward is virtual perks are a lot easier to manage than physical perks, sure. especially yeah. when you're mailing beer around the country. Um, right. So <laughs> we have a show called Thunder Bay that people uh, feel really strongly about it. It's, we're very proud of the show. Uh, it's a limited series about uh, the, the, the hate crime and homicide capital of Canada, where there's a lot of anti-Indigenous racism. And we offered uh, credits for uh, our supporters on the sequel to that show. So there was a very high price point where if you wanted to, to, to support us at that level, we would thank you as sort of as a supporting producer uh, in the credits of that show. And that was a popular perk as well. So do you have a dumping place, a one site or a landing page where everybody can see everything? And is it part of the, uh, the Canada land site or you got to go to Supercast for that so people can look at it? Yeah, it's canadaland.com slash join. And, uh, you know, I, I think anybody who wants to keep it, keep it simple. And one thing I love about yeah. Supercast, it was a bit confusing when we were on Patreon to say, hey, we've got a website. It's canadaland.com. But if you want to support us, go to Patreon. Right, right. Who's Patreon? What's So what I like about Supercast is that they're kind of invisible in the process. You know, you go to canadaland.com slash join and the actual uh, mechanics of all the sign up of the e-commerce is that's all supercast infrastructure but as far as the user is concerned they're on canada land's website they're giving canada land their credit card information they know us and they trust us you know and then they get an email from supercast saying hey you've signed up to canada land via supercast we handle this for canada land uh you know here here's you know where your account lives but what i love about supercast is it's so frictionless that email if you're just signing up for one show you don't even necessarily need that email because it like within the app, if you if you click on the show notes and you can sign you, that takes you to canadaland.com slash join. You're you're filling out a form very quickly there. And then immediately you're you're, you're sent uh your uh your private RSS feed, your premium RSS feed, which with a click of a button, it used to be you had to manually copy and paste that into Apple Podcasts, but with Supercast, it just installs right. that right back onto whatever nice. you listen to podcasts on. So it, it all good. happens very simply. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Well, Jess, thanks so much, man. I appreciate you coming on and then surprising Jason and good luck with everything. It sounds like you're, you're killing it up there. We, we certainly appreciate your time. Thanks. And, and uh, have a great weekend. Great insight, thank Jesse. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Ed, for what you're doing. We're all, we're all following it really closely and glad to have you in the, in the, in the scene as well. Thank you. Have a great thank one. You. Jesse from Canada land, everybody. And uh, Tracy, uh, Thought it went well for the first uh, for the first week. And I don't know. Do you see my light flashing? Is my light I, flashing? What I is thought, going on with I that? thought you had a disco globe. That's what I thought what is you it? had. The a, is not, <laughs> but the light is not flashing behind me. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> I, 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 thought you're, I thought it was a party. I thought you had a disco globe. I didn't want to say anything, but hey. I what? changed <laughs> <laughs> I changed the DPI on the camera three times during the show to see if that's what it was, but I, I might need a new light or something, I guess. I got a brand I new computer <laughs> just for this show. I went out and bought a computer behind my wife's back. I didn't tell her what it was. I told her not to look at it because it was a Christmas gift for her. She looked at it and found out it was a new computer, and now the light is flashing. Okay, <laughs> so Ed, I, have, I have one question for you. Did you keep the receipt? I did. I did for tax purposes only. <laughs> well, you might want to return it. So because yeah. I think something might be wrong. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Well, thank you so much. We'll be back next week, folks, with another great guest from uh, next week is Advertise Cast. And hopefully we can line up another surprise just like we had today. We appreciate you all tuning in and we'll be back next week with another guest. Have a great one, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon.